Hi, so in this video, I'm going to show you how to write a menu driven program. Okay, so we are now in week six and um, we have talked about functions. And in this module, in this week, we're talking about functions with reference parameters. And it's also a good uh, time to talk about menu driven programs. So we can put everything together. We're going to put loops, functions, reference parameters, all of that stuff together. So if you click on this link, it will take you to my replit um, for the menu driven program that I have. And I've already written the program. I'm going to kind of walk you through it and show you how to how, how the whole thing works. And that way you can use this as an example to create a menu driven program. Okay, so have my header here it talks about it's a menu driven calculator program. So it mimics a calculator does some basic calculations. As input, it takes an operator and two numbers. And I will add a note here saying for right now, uh, the numbers must be whole numbers. So limited to whole numbers, we are not going to do anything with real numbers at this time. So it just ints. Output would be a single integer, which is the result. Okay. So we declare our headers as usual, and I have a list of function prototypes that I'm going to use. So everything that I want to do has been pretty much put into functions, which is ideally how your program should be. So we have a welcome function. Let's start with each function. So the welcome function simply outputs some message. So it's a void function, doesn't take any parameters. It says, welcome to my calculator program. This calculator works only with whole numbers. So it's good to let the users know what to expect. You can do five operations, plus, minus, multiplication, division, and the mod operation, okay? It's a remainder operation. Then I call my display menu function. So that's the information. Then I have a menu that the users can pick from. So uh, please pick an option from below, plus to add two numbers, minus to subtract two numbers, and so on. Give them all the options, and there's just a little prompt that it waits at. Okay, again, this only displays the menu. It doesn't read anything from the user notice. It's a void function, which takes no parameters. Then I have a separate function that actually reads the input from the user. And notice it returns a char. It doesn't take any parameters. So it returns a char. So if you go to that function, once this menu is displayed, then we are ready to read. So we call this function. So anytime, you know how functions work, right? So once a welcome function is done, I call that from main. Once welcome is done, control goes back to main on line 30. The display menu function, no parameters, right, gets called. It outputs a whole bunch of statements. Control goes back to line 31. Then we call the read option. Read option returns something. It returns a char. So I have a local variable called char my operator, and I put whatever read option returns into that. So when we come to read option, after display menu, we are ready to read whatever the user entered here. So I declare a local variable called char option, and I read in using just the scene extraction operator, because option is going to be a letter at that time. I don't have to use scene.get or anything like that. Then I return option. I return option, and we do our error checking later, I think. Um, if not, we should do it there. We'll check. I think I do my error checking here at the bottom. Okay, so I read whatever they entered and it comes back to main and it goes into my operator. Okay, so once I have read it, then the next thing to do is to read user input. So user input says, I want to read the user input, right? Two numbers. And notice it's a void function. And user input takes two parameters by reference. So they're going to go in and they're going to come back changed. So if you go look at the function user input, it's a void function. It takes two int variables by reference. Now from this function, I want to do data validation. I want to make sure that they enter a right number and that if they enter a character, or something like that, my program won't fail. Okay, this is optional for you, but I've shown you how to do it. So read int takes a string parameter and returns an integer. The string is the prompt, whatever prompt. So if I put the string as a parameter, then my function is flexible, which means anytime I want to read an integer, I call this function and I send whatever prompt I want to it. 
okay so read int gets called enter first number is the parameter that goes in and it comes here and what I do here is I declare a local int variable I output the prompt notice the prompt this text goes into this parameter prompt and I output it so at this point it's going to say enter first number right then I read into the temporary variable and remember we did this earlier on in chapter 3 or 4 or something like that in chapter 3 see in if it doesn't have a good input it will fail so it will return false so we are checking to see while not see in that means if see in is not good then I want to go in I want to do see in that clear which clears my buffer which actually clears see in which resets see in back to a good state we need that see in that ignore ignores everything from the buffer any bad input that they have typed in and I output invalid data and here's a very important step you have to read the input again okay so you read the input again and it goes back did they enter a good input again so this while loop sits in there until they enter a valid data every time they enter something invalid it's going to keep going in that loop because scene is going to fail every time scene fails it's going to go in there when they enter good data while not cn, cn will be good, which is true. Not cn will be false, so the whole condition will be false and will come out here. And we return that good number that they've entered. And that comes back here and goes into num1. And again, we do exactly the same thing, but we say enter second number to read another integer. So reusability of code, right? So it goes into num2, and num1 and num2 are sent by reference. So when this function is done, we go back to main and num1 and num2 have some values in them. Now I take that num1 and num2 and this operator that came back from my read option and send all three of them to my calculate function. My calculate function, notice, takes all of these parameters by value because there's no reason to send them by reference, right? I don't need them changed. I'm just gonna use them, calculate the result, and actually gonna output right there in that function. So I come here I receive num1, num2, and my operator. I have a result to store the answer. I have a Boolean variable. We'll see why in a minute. I switch the operator. A switch is a very good thing to have. It's much more efficient than an if. So anytime you can use a switch, use a switch. I check. It's a character. So the, the my operator is a character variable. So you have to have single quote around it. So if it's a plus, I want to add the two numbers, put it into result, and break. If it's a minus, I want to subtract the two numbers, put it into result and break. If it's a multiplication, I multiply them, put it into result and break. Now, if it's division, I check to see if the second number, so in this case, I'm assuming that this is numerator and this is denominator. Numerator one or num one is the numerator and num two is the denominator. So I'm checking to see if denominator is not equal to zero because if it is equal to zero, I don't want to divide. That's a division by error, zero error. So num2 not equal to 0. If it is not equal to 0, then you divide. Else, you output an error message that says division by 0 error. Okay, so that section is for division. You must have that. And then we break. If in the case of mod, again, we are doing a division operation. So you must do the same check for the mod as well. If it is mod, if the number 2 is 0, then I don't want to do, uh, well, if it's not zero, I want to do the mod operation. If it is, then I say you can't do that. Now, the default is if all of these cases fail and they've entered some other random character, then the default will catch it and say invalid operator. Okay. Now, when we come out of the switch, the reason I have the flag is if they entered an invalid operator, I don't want you to output the result. So my flag by default is set to true actually i have a little bug in here my flag is set to true if it is default i should say invalid operator and i should set my flag to false otherwise the flag doesn't do anything so flag gets set to false if flag is true then i output the result if it went in here and the flag is false then it won't output any result okay so that's the calculate function it calculates it now let's take a look at main pretty much main is done we declare a couple of variables to be passed as parameters to our functions the read option um, returns a chart it has to store 
the character somewhere that's my operator and the way a menu driven program works is when the menu displays and we have done it one time we wanted to keep repeating it over and over again so i have a while loop that says that has a variable called option that it's going to check the option is getting read here at the very end of the while loop would you like to run the program again yes or no and whatever the user enters goes into this variable option char variable and so that's what i'm checking but since this is happening at the very end i initialize my option to yes so that means this will loop this loop will run at least one time right so while to lower of option not equal to no it is not equal to no because to start off with it's a yes or a y we go in we output the welcome message we display the menu we go to read option it's going to try and read the input return something that's going to go into my operator then we call user input to read num1 and num2 they're going to come back filled then we turn around and send all three of them to calculate which is going to output the result or an error message and then it's going to come back here and it's going to say would you like to run again because remember when the function is done it returns to where it was called from so it comes here and it says would you like to run again and based on the answer the while loop is going to execute so let's see how this works so here's my option here's my welcome message here are my options so if i type in a slash then it says enter first number enter second number three divided by one is three would you like to run again yes and let's say okay it gives me the same options let's do our mod operation and test our division by zero it says division by zero error it's not right let's do it one more time and this time let's say we type in a different option um oh it does ask me for the input so we need to fix that that's not that's a bug when i type in something that doesn't belong there it should ask me it shouldn't ask me the numbers right it says invalid operator after the fact so there should be a check right here actually right after uh read option there should be a check that says if it is not any one of these, then no need to do these things. Okay. Okay. Let's see if we can put that in and fix it. Um, would you like to run again? Let's say no. And that quits. So that part is fine. So we could potentially come here and say if my operator is equal to plus or if then we're going to copy that my operator is equal to minus or my operator is equal to so if it's any one of these then we want it to do our user input Otherwise, we don't want to do it um, equals mod. My operator is plus minus multiplication division or mod. Then we are going to copy this stuff, cut it out of there and put it in there. Okay, so if it is any one of those, we want to do it. If not, I don't want to do those. I would just want to say, would you like to run again? But I do want it to say invalid operator. So else, see how, let's go down here. I'm gonna copy this. Here. Okay. And then this will happen anyway. So let's try that. Uh, something about, okay, that's okay. We can put a double quote there. And let me try a different thing. Okay, so it says invalid operator. Would you like to run again? Let's try a different operator. Would you like to run again? Yes. Okay, so now we can try multiplication, three and four. Would you like to run again? Yes. So let's try a dollar sign. It's this invalid operator. Would you like to run again? So it's a little better than that. So it gives us the options right away. I say no, and it's done.
Okay. So that's a menu-driven program. The key to a menu-driven program is to have this while loop in main that kind of goes and displays the menu over and over again so we can stay in the loop until the user says, I'm done with the program. Okay. So this should help you with your um, assignment number, I believe it's five, that talks about the gym membership.